Greetings, Augustana Lutheran Church members and guests. Interim Pastor John greeting you today. A few announcements, mainly words of thanks. Thank you to those who participated last week in our congregational meeting and site study. So the official business, the mortgage has been shifted, changed a little bit to make the payments smaller and more manageable at this time. And then we had the site study with Pastor Renee Splickle Larson from the South Dakota Synod. She walked us through the ministry site profile, which is the paperwork for the congregation like this to use in the call process to be given to pastoral candidates. So thank you to those who added some input in that. That is now live and uh, interviews for candidates with candidates will be coming soon. So continue to be in prayer for the call committee. Thank you to Autumn for being chair of that group and the members of it, and also to Anna for chairing the congregation and the work of the Congregational Council and the members that are a part of that too. This week we restart Logos. Logos is our children's programming that takes place on Wednesday evenings and is a partnership with Pueblo de Dios. This year and this fall we're going to just stick to members of the two congregations to limit some of the numbers to keep it safe as the con pandemic continues. But please contact me if you have children that are interested in being part of that or if you want to be a helper or teacher uh, with that. Again, that's going to start this coming Wednesday, the 27th. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you also to any other ways you're connecting with this congregation. I would really invite you to get connected if you're not. This is, during this interim time, it's important to for the Congregational Council and leadership here to really gauge the interest level and the connection to this congregation. So please take this as another invitation to connect here uh, in worship, in other ways. Thank you for doing that. In November, we'll have a little focus on stewardship. Stewardship is a word that we often use for money, and that's part of it. But it's really this idea of how we use the life that God has given to us as individuals and as congregation and as people in this world. So we need to refocus on that. And part of that will be uh, an estimate of giving for the rest of the year and also for 2022 as the Congregational Council and the congregation will prepare the upcoming budget for next year. So again, thank you for the ways that you participate. Also a very big thank you to Sawyer Vanden Heuvel, which is our guest preacher Today, Sawyer is a Synod staff member and also uh, is a seminarian, is on the way to becoming a pastor in the ELCA. So thank you to Sawyer. Blessings on your week. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Gracious God, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. You are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. By water in your word, you claim us as your children, receiving the gifts of your promise and servants of all. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away the brokenness within us, and drown the evil around us. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gathering song today is a simple song, and it's in the call and response style, meaning I'll sing a line, and you just repeat it back to me, a call and response. Come, let us worship God is the song. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Hope 
for their children. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. You restore us each day, O Lord. You bring healing into our lives and call us to be your helpers in the work of healing. Bless us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples in a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Who are the people in our lives we want to keep silenced? People we wish we could just hear a little less from in our day to day. Perhaps it's your boss who keeps telling you what to do, or maybe it's your spouse who never seems to quit adding things to the chore list, or maybe it's that one kid in school that just won't leave you alone. Today, I am thinking about the people in our lives that go just a bit beneath the surface from our everyday pesky encounters with colleagues, classmates, and family members that we wish we could keep silent. It's the person we see from our cars on the side of the interstate exit asking for money. They should just get a job, we tell ourselves. We try not to look at them while we sit in our cars waiting for the light to finally turn green. The light turns green and we book it. Or perhaps we wish to silence our medical community and disease experts. Can they just quit talking about COVID-19 already? Haven't we had enough? Let's move on with our lives. Yet, people continue to contract the virus, and our weary doctors and nurses are running on fumes caring for patients. Or perhaps it's our climate scientists, government leaders, and activists in our shared world who are alarming us to their full extent of the dangers that lie before us 
if we fail to act on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Climate change isn't real, is it? It's just a hoax. This list could go on of those we wish to keep silenced. In today's Gospel reading from Mark, we encounter a person whom the crowd around him would rather be invisible and certainly not heard. Bartimaeus, who is named in this story, was a blind beggar who was sitting alongside a road. This may have been his usual spot where he could be found each day, or perhaps he traveled from place to place looking for a place for help and waiting to be noticed. Then, one day, he hears that Jesus of Nazareth is coming through town. Jesus, son of David, he cries out, have mercy on me. Quiet, orders the crowd around Bartimaeus. Unafraid and refusing to keep quiet, for he knows he is in the presence of the Messiah, Bartimaeus calls out again, this time more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus halts in his footsteps, looks at Bartimaeus, and calls him over to what will soon change the course of his life forever. The crowd around him say to Bartimaeus, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. Bartimaeus answers this call from Jesus, throws off his only possession, and goes over to Jesus. Then Jesus asks him, What do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus asks for his sight to be restored once again. Jesus heals him, his sight is restored, and Bartimaeus follows Jesus on the way. Bartimaeus received much more than his sight being restored on that day. He answered his call into discipleship to follow Jesus. Even before he could physically see that it was Jesus, he knew that this was the Messiah that he was encountering. Willing to risk everything and to cross boundary divides of who's in and who's out, or who can speak and who should not speak, Bartimaeus literally jumps at the chance to follow Jesus. Bartimaeus' healing is not only about removing the ailment that was preventing him from being able to see. Instead, it shows that the kingdom of God, through Jesus Christ, is here to overcome the suffering of humanity from oppression and exclusion. Jesus possesses the power over those systems that oppress us and alienate us from each other, and instead, Jesus leads us into the wholeness with God. What's important to know here, though, is that it is not because of Bartimaeus' faith that his sight was restored. It was through his faith and trust that led Bartimaeus to call out boldly to Jesus. Bartimaeus' faith made him well, the text says, and restored him to full participation in society. It literally saves him. No longer was he cast aside and forced to be silenced. He was now a person of the way and an active participant in God's restoration and healing in this world. Earlier this week, I was listening to a previously aired episode of On Being hosted by Krista Tippett. Krista was interviewing Dr. Rachel Naomi Raymond, an author and professor of family medicine, about the difference between curing and healing. In this episode, Dr. Raymond noted that in medicine, we can find cures for many ailments in the world. However, healing is so much more than finding a cure. It's more human than that. Dr. Raymond said, it's not about healing the world by making a huge difference. It's about healing the world that touches you, that's around you. It's a collective task. We are all healers of the world, Dr. Raymond explained. Yet, we know this is hard work. Sometimes, as she noted, we all feel that we're not enough to make a difference, that we need to be more somehow, 
either wealthier or more educated or other, different than the people we are. It turns out we are exactly what's needed. So how are we healers in this world? How are we exactly what someone needs today? How, like Bartimaeus, are we active participants in God's healing and restoration? These are questions I have been pondering and reflecting on this week. For me, being an active agent of healing looks like the time I am privileged of getting to spend each week with members of Augustana University's Gender and Sexuality Alliance, or GSA. This is a part of my clinical pastoral education. The GSA is a group of LGBTQIA persons and their allies that meet regularly on campus and provide outlets for young adults to have a safe and inclusive space for them to be their authentic selves with no judgment or alienation from others. As someone who is a person of faith and representative of Christ's church, I was unsure of how my presence would be received due to the historical trauma the church has caused persons based upon who they love or what gender they identify. Yet, it turns out, I was called to be in the right place. Since showing up at the beginning of the fall semester, I have been able to begin forming relationships with these young adults, and they have finally just started to open up to me about questions regarding their faith and about who God is shaping them to be in the world. All because I took heart. I got up and went where I was called to be. Just by showing up in these young adults' lives, I'm able to be an agent of healing, reconciliation, and love to God's people who have for far too long been forced to keep silent. Just how Jesus broke social barriers to heal Bartimaeus, we too can cross the social divides and extend a healing hand because you are exactly what is needed in this world. You are bearers of this good news today. So friends, take heart, get up. Jesus Christ has called you to follow him. Go, your faith has made you well. Amen. The song is called Behold How Pleasant or Miran Que Bueno. It's originally in Spanish, as you may have picked up on. It's based on Psalm 133, which talks about how good and pleasant it is for God's people to be together as God's children, as people in Christ. Christians, we can say that. Uh, I thought it fitting as we restart the Logos Children's Program, this partnership between Augustana Lutheran Church and Pueblo de Dios, um, and this walking with these two churches that are partners in ministry together. So miren que bueno, I'll invite you to sing the chorus together. We'll sing that in Spanish, and I will sing the verses in English. Miren, miren que bueno, que bueno es. Miren que bueno, que bueno es. How pleasant and harmonious when God's people are together. Fragrant as precious oil when running fresh on Aaron's beard. Miren que bueno, que bueno es. Miren que bueno, que bueno es. How pleasant and harmonious when God's people are together. Refreshing as the dew upon the mountain of the Lord. Miran que bueno, que bueno es. Miran que bueno, que bueno es. How pleasant and harmonious when God's people are together. There the Lord God bestows a blessing, life forevermore. 
Miren qué bueno, qué bueno es. Miren qué bueno, qué bueno es. Again. Miren qué bueno, qué bueno es. Miren qué bueno, qué bueno es. Again. Miren qué bueno, qué bueno es. Miren qué bueno, qué bueno. Now gathered together by Christ, let us pray in the words our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.